Hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Dental Implant Podcast. Uh, I know I keep saying this, that I'm going to do this more often and I will. Uh, I, I've, I've got a bit more time coming up and I can't wait to get started. So just before I do introduce you to my next guest, I want to make you aware that the Academy of Implant Excellence is, is wow, the, the feedback that I'm getting from delegates, I'm just absolutely honored. Thank you so much. I promised that I would put my everything into this and it seems like the delegates are enjoying it just as much as what I am. So if you'd like to know more about the Academy of Implant Excellence and how we can take your implant skills to the next level, and that doesn't matter whether you're starting in implants or you're already placed and you want to learn to do immediates or you want to learn to do full arch or you want to learn to do uh, pterygoid sinus lifting, I can help you achieve, achieve the next step in your implant career. I'm also looking to do a world tour, uh, which sounds very, very strange, but I, I, I'm, I've got a number of colleagues abroad who'd like for me to go and run a two-day masterclass. This masterclass will be on, uh, uh, on all aspects of implant dentistry, uh, but it will have a special focus on full arch and on pterygoids. So if you are in the USA, if you're in Canada, if you're in uh, Australia or wherever else you are, feel free to reach out to me and just uh, if I can know kind of like numbers and whereabouts you are, I can start to plan accordingly. And uh, I, I, I can't wait. It's the, I'm so excited to introduce to you my next guest. So uh, my next guest is uh, Mateen, and Mateen's he's a really, really nice guy. He's a general dentist. I uh, met him at a conference not very long ago, and Mateen's got a very special skill of um, teaching other dentists, in particular associates, kind of like how to be efficient with their diary and kind of like how to plan and you know how to get really amazing results for patients and, and keep the patients really, really happy. And uh, he's agreed to come on the podcast and kind of like what, what we're going to talk about today is how to integrate that key between being an associate and placing implants because it's slightly different to, to to being a principal and placing implants and the reason for that is quite simple if you're a, if you're a practice principal you can do whatever you want if you're an associate you got to play by the principal's rules and Mateen's just fantastic with his knowledge about this and Mateen correct me if I'm wrong but you're really good at helping associates get to the point where their their principals just love them because the patients love them and it's kind of like the, the, the practice does really well that's kind of like what you're really good at is that correct that is correct yeah thank you so much for that introduction um Pav. and honestly I'm, I'm really happy and honored that you've got me on here and um, you're actually someone who i look up to in the game as well you already thank know you. this and um you're um academy that you've launched you already know that i want to be a part of that <laughs> and and yeah you've pretty much summed it up i've got um a system in place that i've kind of developed over years of practice so a little introduction into me i graduated in 2016 i worked for the first year strictly as an nhs dentist in a sort of low socioeconomic area and um i understood you know that for me personally, I wanted to provide a really high level of care to patients. And ultimately, that's what patients wanted as well. So quite often when we go to um, a specialist for anything, we want the best advice and we want to know what's the best thing for us. And I realized within the NHS, you, you, you know, you can't always offer the best. So then that then led me to kind of, um, that started me off on my career path, really. I started searching into um, digital dentistry. I found a practice, which is a fully private practice that offered digital dentistry. I just felt like for me, that was um, that was going to be an area that's really going to grow over the next few years, which it has. So it was the right move at that time. Um, so I worked in um, private practice and then I kind of <laughs> developed into a cosmetic dentist. So I was offering lots of Invisalign, lots of composite bonding, lots of porcelain veneers as well. And before I knew it, I started placing implants as well. Once I had kind of conquered cosmetic dentistry, um, implants was the next logical step. 
And then after that, um, I kind of went into business as well. I set up my first squat practice in partnership with a sort of um, group of dental practices. And that's been doing really well. That's when I kind of made a small pivot. And I also started coaching delegates. And you kind of pretty much hit the nail on the head there. That is what I do. I like to try and help these dentists fast track their careers and just become way more productive and get better results with their patients doing the type of dentistry that they want to do and also providing the level of care that patients are expecting to receive anyways, right? Because like I was saying before, that is the expectation. You want the best advice and you want the best treatments, irrespective of whichever profession it is or whichever specialist you see. And I kind of just embodied that. And um, that's what I teach forward as well. And yeah, my delegates, you know, um, they're really enjoying it. And in fact, I encourage all of them to sort of pursue their career in implant dentistry as well, because I feel like there is a big fear when it comes to um, implants, both from um, dentists, uh, young dentists, especially, and from patients as well. But the reality is that it is the best treatment for um, a missing tooth for patients. And from a dentist's point of view, from a technical standpoint, um, with the right sort of uh, mentors and with the right uh, learning in place and the right planning, you can make it quite a straightforward process for yourself. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a summary about me and sort yeah. of my ethos uh, and the sort of belief that I've got high quality treatments and progressing young dentists to get to placing implants really quickly. And that's when I'll introduce them to the master like yourself Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I, I, I still see myself as a, as a learner. You know, it's, it's, I'm always learning something new every single day. So I've yeah. got a really simple, Mateen, I've got a really simple question for you. What is the biggest hurdle that you see um, associates have, let's say, when they want to start getting into implants and things like that? So when they're ready to upskill, when they are ready to... Um, uh, 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 to embark on that next stage of their of, of, of their career, and I know, that, I mean, we're talking about implants because this is a dental implant podcast, right? But when, it's not just implants. Yeah. Let's say that we start with um, uh, veneers, bonding, ortho, whatever it is. What, what do you find is quite often the, the 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 hurdles that that associates will come across, and how do you get past them? In my opinion, the biggest hurdle is not having someone there to hold your hand. Um, the practices that have specialists or implant surgeons um, doing a high volume of these treatments, young associates, associates can often learn from them and start their career sooner in, in, in whichever field it is. But for um, associates who don't have that in their practice already and they want to get into implant surgery, I think that's the biggest thing that holds them back, just the fear of the unknown. You know, they've not seen the procedure happen happening live. Um, they've not been involved in it. They've not sort of um, um, experienced what it's like to be in that kind of an environment. And I think that can really cause people to add on years and years and years of just waiting before they finally decide to take the leap. So I think access to mentors is probably the biggest thing that's holding um, dentist back, in my opinion. I mean, I I agree. I mean, I've spoken about mentors so many times uh, on this podcast, and uh, some people don't agree with me. Some people are like, well, I can learn it by myself. It's like, well, yes, you can. You know, mentor is it, mentoring is time consuming. It's expensive. But the biggest, biggest, biggest leaps I've had in my career have been through mentoring, and literally is the amount of growth that you get in months you would otherwise take years and years and years to do. So it actually pays for itself really quite quickly. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it sounds like you're saying that a business mentor as well as a, as a clinical mentor is kind of like a key. It's, they kind of like go hand in hand. And um, it's, 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 it, 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 it's really finding both really. So as, a, uh, as an associate, it can be tricky sometimes, right? You know, if you're stuck in one practice and you want to learn a new skill or you want to do something and uh, you're finding that 
you know, maybe the practice principle is, is quite happy with the way that things are. They, you know, they, they kind of like steady eddies. They, you know, they don't like change. They, they don't want to push. They don't want to grow. But as an as an associate, maybe you do want to grow. What's the type of, type of conversations that, you, that, that associates need to be having with their principles to kind of like try and get the ball rolling? And if you don't have a mentor in, in your practice, what's the what, what's the best way uh, uh, to find somebody who may be able to help? I mean, for example, is I do offer one-to-one mentoring. I will go to other people's practices to do it, um, but not everybody has access to that. So, you know, it's when you are when you're ready to take that next step of the journey and you're looking for a mentor, how, how do you go about that? Really good question. Um, I think, <clears throat> I think it's 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 always difficult to um, find the courage sometimes to speak to your principal about things, um, especially when it comes to business. There's this assumption that your principal is just going to be far too busy to to take anything on board. But at the end of the day, you know, we're all just trying to provide for our families and if someone has a good idea um, of course it's something worth listening to and from an associate's point of view I think you have to remember that you are your own brand and you have to think about what you want from your career as well and what type of care you want to be providing to your patients as well so I think for any associate who's thinking of getting into implant it'll be music to the principal's ears, to be honest with you. If they said, look, I want to start a journey into implant dentistry, um, perhaps they could ask for advice from their principal on um, any mentors. But the best place, I think, would probably be the um, Facebook groups on um, for dentists, um, Instagram. And of course, look, um, I, I really would want your academy to be Number one, I'm not just saying that because um, you've got me on here. Um, I truly think that it's a lot of value that people are going to be getting. Look, knowledge is good to have, but experience is what matters even more than knowledge. And correct me if I'm wrong. You've been you you place around 1,800 implants a year, right? That's that's what what kind that's of the- I remember. Yeah, that's that's kind of like what I currently place. Um, I, I've, I think I've placed over about ten thousand in total. Um, and wow, yeah, okay, you, you, you do pick up a few a few things as you're going along. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? So, yeah. so going back to your question, sorry, um, about finding a mentor. That's the type of mentor that you want to have. You want to be um, trying to get experience. Um, with someone who's placed a large volume of implants and who's had failures and someone who's kind of been at the top of their game and doing the the, not just single implant industry i'm talking about um, full arch cases pterygoids zygomatics and that type of thing because then when you start your implant journey it is another language and there is levels to the sort of implant world as well so yeah for me i think an associate bringing up the conversation with a principal about providing implants i think it's great i don't think principals will have a problem with it in terms of finding a mentor you want to be um working with someone who's got loads and loads of experience um those are the top two tips that i would say anyways for anyone who's considering going down this road so but so, so so basically is if there's nobody in your practice who can help you achieve that next goal you need to effectively bite the bullet and find somebody who is um uh, prepared to mentor you and by that oh, i don't definitely. Mean, i don't necessarily mean like oh quit your job or whatever but it may be that you do like half a session like either a morning or an afternoon it might be every couple of weeks with somebody who you consider a mentor. Um, so definitely, it, it, yeah, I, I can see that applying to things like Invisalign and, 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 and bonding as well, because you, you can pick up a, a lot of stuff just just from watching people and, 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 and speaking to them. And certainly when I first started out in my implant career, that's kind of like that, that's exactly what would happen. You know, I would. I would go to the, the the gentleman who taught me, and he would do all on four, and I would I, and I would sedate his patients for him because I was already sedating patients at that time, and I picked up a lot of tips and tricks just from watching him, and sometimes that would mean going out on a bank holiday, it would mean going out on a Saturday, it would mean going out on you know dropping one day per month in my existing practice to go out, but that's the sacrifice that you have to make if you want to learn. 
And uh, this is kind of like something that I, you know that I've always said. You know, you cannot learn a new skill um, just by going to sleep and hoping it comes to you in your dream. You you have to work hard at, it, at this type of stuff. You know, when, when people look at me, they go, "Oh, Pav, you know, you place implants really quickly." Well, they've not seen the decade and a half of me getting to this place where I can. Where, where, where I can place really quickly and, and, and efficiently. You know, they, they've not seen the first implant that I placed, which it was a healed site. It took me three hours to do, and the implant position was so awful. I had to uh, uh, get my uh, mentor in to remove the implant and replace it because, because it was completely unusable. You know, so it's, it, pe- 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 people don't see that 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 build up on the back end. They just see the front end where, you know, all of a sudden everybody can can, can do everything. So obviously, we, you know, we, we've spoken about how it's important to, 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 to get a mentor. Obviously, implementing in a, a in a practice, you're going to need a mentor, whether it's in a practice or or. or or, or you find a mentor externally. What yeah. about as an associate? What about equipment and things like that? Because equipment's not cheap. How do you go about speaking to the principal about that? There's okay. There is um, two trains of thought here. I think the, the traditional sort of approach that um, associates used to have was you would ask your principal to buy the equipment for you, and that's the bottleneck, right? So the bottleneck is there. The principal has to buy the equipment until that transaction is not done or until you don't have the implant equipment, you can't start. Then um, you've got the sort of um, sort of entrepreneurial type dentists who would buy their own equipment or um, strike a deal with the principal. Look, I'll pay for half and you pay for half or um, just buy their own. And I'm completely for the dentists that will, would buy their own equipment because Look, if that's the thing that's stopping you from getting to where you want to be in your career, then that's an investment that you should make yourself, right? And just make that investment. You will not regret it. And this is coming from a young associate. I bought all of my own equipment. And I realized that very quickly because I spoke to the practice manager once. Look, I need to get this. She said, I'll run it by the principal. I I waited way longer than I wanted to wait. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to buy my own stuff. And I bought my own equipment. And then other dentists saw that, you know, I had my own stuff and they liked this equipment that I was uh, buying. And I was kind of the catalyst for change in the practice where the principal was like, actually, you know what, Mateen, this works really well. Um, We're going to start supplying this to you. And then there's sort of other dentists who would take it even a step further and buy their own digital scanners. And I think those guys are going to prosper massively. So yeah, in terms of equipment, please do not wait for your principal to give you the thumbs up or the principal to buy it for you. Go and buy it yourself. And you mentioned something earlier as well about um, sacrificing time. Um, There's two types of investment. There's a investment of money and then there's an investment of time, right? The return of your investment on time of you taking that time out to go ahead and watch an implant surgeon do their surgery or go and see or spend days with your mentor, it's invaluable. Like it's going to be worth way more for you to go and do that than it would for you to have been in surgery, practicing your routine dentistry. So yeah, the re- the return uh, of investment of the time is just huge. So Absolutely. Take time out of your diary, block time out from your diary, go and watch your mentor. I used to do that for myself as well. That's how I got into implants. And when it comes to implant motors, um, there's loads and loads of deals and offers available. All you have to do is just ring up the implant company that you want to work with. And most of the time they have bundle packages. So you can sort of buy a set number of implants and then they'll give you like a crazy discount on the implant motor. So uh, I think it's absolutely a good investment to buy your own equipment. Would you I th- agree? Yeah, I, I, I think there's a few key words that you said there. The first one's bottleneck, right? You've got you to gotta look at where the bottlenecks are for you clinically in terms of your education, in terms of everything like that. So when you said that, I was like, actually, yeah, it's quite good. That, that, that's a, a fantastic way of putting it. And the other thing that you said as well is, 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 is being entrepreneurial about it. So instead of, you know, instead of turning around and saying, well, my boss says no, it's like, well, you know, screw it. My boss says no. 
I want to do it anyway because I'm going to buy it myself. Um, and I think exactly. what ends up happening there is when people are prepared to take those types of steps, they, they, they end up being significantly more confident moving forward. Um, I've got uh, one uh, mentee who's, a, who's, who's taking my, um, my intensive one-to-one mentoring program. And what we're doing with him is he's in a really good position where he doesn't place any implants yet, so he's a complete novice. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to get him to a point because he sees about five or six potential implant patients per month. And we're going to get him to a point within six months where he's confident placing implants in healed ridges and kind of like straightforward stuff like that. So w- within six months, I'm going to get the ball rolling for him. And it's one-on-one um, mentoring stuff, particularly the, the, the intensive package with me. It's not for everybody, you know, because some people don't have the time for it. Some, some people haven't got, haven't, they, they don't have the hunger for it. And it goes back to that thing that you were saying is it has to be those types of people who are kind of like that entrepreneurial mindset. So the people who, who work well well with me are, are the people like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I am hell bent that in six that in six months from now, I'm going to be placing implants or, you know, I'm placing implants, but in six months from now, I'm hell bent that I'm, I'm going to become uh, uh, confident with immediates or I'm going to start doing sinus lifts. Because what happens is when you have that mindset, you find a way to do it, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so I think that the term entrepreneurialism is, is, is very, very important. And uh, as you said, it's, you know, it's because I, I know a few associates as well where they've gone out and, 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 and bought their own intraoral scanner and they are, they're doing just, they're doing amazingly because this is something that Chris Barrow and I spoke about as well. And Chris is like, one of the best tools that you can have at the moment is an intraoral scanner. Because what you do is you scan the patient's teeth, show it to them on the uh, uh, on a screen and shut up and they ask for the treatment themselves. You know, so when you are, yeah. when you're, when you're doing this type of stuff, then it's only going to enhance your own practice. And once you start to, once you start to have these two, three, four, five implant patients per month, all of a sudden, you know, you're not having to do, I'm just going to sound wrong because I know somebody's going to enjoy doing this, but you're not going to have to do fissure sealants. You're not going to have to do like a cruise yeah. like that. You, know, you, you can spend your time doing a, a longer procedure where the, 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 the reward is much higher. And to be honest, is, is the patients afterwards are just like, you know, I'm so glad I got my tooth back. And the, I generally tend to find that the more complex the, 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 the treatment, the more the patients are um, uh, 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 thankful afterwards. It's not about thanks. It's, it's just nice to know that you've helped somebody on a completely emotional level, you know. So oh, what, what I, sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like when I do zygos and patients like, I've been wearing a denture for 40 years. It's like, bang, now you've got fixed teeth. We got it for you in a day. And they're just, they're just so over the moon that I don't have to wear a denture anymore. I've got fixed teeth. For me, that's what the profession's about, is, is, is helping those who really, really need it. That's, that's where our skills truly unlock. 110%. I completely agree with you. I mean, I don't know if you have any uh, family members that actually wear dentures, but I, I have had family members that, that have worn dentures, and it affects everything. You know, you cannot sit together with everyone and enjoy the same foods that everyone's eating. You have to eat um, a separate type of meal that you can easily break down when you're wearing dentures. Sometimes you don't want to eat in front of people. So you're kind of not eating properly and things like that. And and I'm very attentive anyways. And, I, and I've always sort of um, seen um, these family members isolate themselves a little bit and kind of, uh, I felt really bad for them. And I was like, you know, implants one day i'm going to give you implants right and that's going to change so so yeah you're absolutely right i think implants is truly the end should truly be the end game for all dentists you mentioned something earlier about um like you said people are probably gonna uh, not understand properly wh- why we're saying this but you know doing fissure sealants and fillings and things like that what i wanted to talk about here was i think that the future of dentistry or NHS dentistry is going to move in such a way that it will be a therapist led service. Now, a dental therapist can do fillings and a dental therapist can do fissure sealants. And I believe a dental therapist can also do checkups as well. So as dentists, 
you need to differentiate from what a um, dental therapist can do because you can be replaced by a dental therapist. Um, I love having dental therapists, by the way, and I use dental therapists in my practice as well. So for my associates, I need them to be able to um, have that vision of providing the next level of dentistry that the therapist perhaps can't do. So yeah, you've got to be able to do your crown preps and things like that. But ultimately, you've got to be able to um, do sort of dental implants, in my opinion, and um, cosmetic dentistry as well. So I feel like for, for my delegates that go through my program, most of them go on to then starting their implant journey. And um, I've referred them to yourself as well. Um, a, a couple of them, you know, I've said, look, you know, absolutely, this is where you are. And these were dentists who were exactly that type of dentist that was just doing fillings, um, fissure sealants, very um, uh, monotonous uh, roles in the practice. And after they finished the program, they were like, oh, wow, okay, so my, my limit is truly dependent on how far I want to take it. And um, that, what you said, someone who's not got any teeth to then let them letting them have fixed teeth in a day, that's you standing on top of the mountain as a dentist. That's basically conquered that's when i feel like you've conquered dentistry so for me it's really important for all dentists to start their implant journey as soon as possible because getting to that stage where you've got patients who've been wearing dentures for 40 years and they need zygomatic implants is also a very long journey from when you start placing implants one thing that i that really resonated with me and i kind of get jealous when i see um, a younger dentist starting their implant journey implant journey is i started my implant journey and um there was um a sort of someone who i looked up to in the industry and um we were talking about patients and treatment and um he had done an implant that day and i had done an implant that day so i was like oh yeah i did i did an implant too and he was like you know i wished and this is someone who's um 15 years senior to me and what he said is i wished i had started implants when i was your age um just for context i was 30 at the time i'm 30 i'm 31 now so i'm not old but i'm not young either um but what he was saying was it takes that long to master the, the the sort of implant game, it'll take you 10, 15 years for you to feel like I know everything. And I know for you, you've been doing it for a long time. And the conversation that we were having um, a few weeks ago was that you wanted to learn more and you didn't feel like you, you're at the top of the game right now. I, 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 I still don't know any, uh, everything with Teen. And I, I think yeah. I think on that, there's a, there's a number of things that I want to touch on. Okay, Firstly, I think the moment we think to ourselves, yeah, I'm, I've nailed this, I'm good at this. A, we do ourselves a dis, disservice and B, we do our patients a disservice. We've got to constantly be pushing to learn more and more and more, okay? Secondly is that everything that we've been to talking about, whether it's, you know, composite bonding, veneers, Invisalign, or, or, or implants, it, ha it, it has to be ethical. It has to be in the patient's best interest, 100%. Otherwise, it's not going to work, okay? Yeah. This is why I, <clears throat> this is why I'm actually, I'm just as selective with my patients that I take on board as I am with um, uh, the, my my one to one mentees, because I know that I can't help everybody, and I know that there are some people where they're better off served by other people, just because the, there might be a personality conflict or something or, or something like that. So everything yeah. is it, 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 it's never about the, the the business is always impacted, but it's never about the business. It's about service. It's about helping others. And I think that's really important to, 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 to keep that in your mind because if you're chasing just for the business, you're going to trip up at some point. And at that point, that, that's it. It's game over because everyone will know and it's, it's kind of like there's no coming back from that. If you do everything ethically and you do everything for the right reasons, when the hiccups come, you'll be able to stand back up again really quite quickly. So <clears throat> the, when you were saying as well about having family members who uh, had dentures and it makes it hard for them to eat. Uh, that resonated with me is, I can't remember whether I've said this on the podcast, but I, I openly talk about this. And this is the reason why I'm so passionate about implants and why they are so, so, so important to me. It's not just titanium. It's not just the job. It's not just the, my grandfather in his later years, what he had a denture for 40, 50 years. He wanted me to give him implants and I didn't, I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to place implants. I never got to help him. 
And now every implant that I place is in his memory. Because I was like, fair enough, wow. I couldn't help him, but I can help so many patients in his memory. And that's why when I teach other dentists and mentor other dentists to do that, this is one of the reasons I'm putting so much into the course to generally give as much information as I can. Because in my mind up here, you call me crazy, whatever you want. My mind up here, the more patients that I can help either directly or indirectly, my grandfather's going to be looking at me and going, yeah, you know what? Thank you. That, that I'm doing it is then Absolutely that's, right. why, that's yeah. why it's so personal for me that's why I'm relentless with with, 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 with with my with my studying and some people turn around and say to me Pav you are obsessed damn right I'm obsessed that's why my wedding ring's made out of titanium right <laughs> 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 I love that I, man. I, I absolutely I, love I, that. I think that that's the way that things should be. That we should the cornerstones. I think are what I'm trying to get to. The cornerstones are firstly do it ethically and for the right reasons, uh, and, uh, and and secondly keep learning. Never ever stop learning. There's always something else to learn, and this is why um, this is why I still consider myself a novice because. I've got so much to learn still. And all that happens yeah. is, you know, I come across a problem. I find a, an, I find an answer for that problem and it gives me three more questions. So what's happening is as time's going on, as time goes on, I'm finding that I actually understand less and less and less about implants. I just happen to get luckier and luckier with them. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, where, where, where does it, where does it stop? Right. Is it doesn't stop with zygomatics. I'll tell you that. Because what happens when zygomatics go wrong and you need to do and you need to redo something there? Then how do you deal with it? What happens when you do, get a problem with zygomatics? It's, it's, it's relentless. It's constantly going. And then you have uh, uh, transnasal implants. Um, you've got subperiosteal, subperiosteal frame. It's just absolutely relentless. And then on top of that, <laughs> because insane. I... Yeah. Yeah. On top of that, because I do sedation, because for me, uh, implants and sedation go hand in hand, you're constantly learning about sedation as well. So it has to be ethically for the right reasons. Um, and uh, I think that that's the best way to, it's not grow your business, but as I said, it, 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 like, like you said a bit, a little bit earlier, it's almost like your own personal brand where you get known for, this guy's passionate about it. This guy studies hard. This guy's going to teach me well this guy's going to and and it's not it's not a facade it's a, it, it is a you know not everybody's going to like it i don't care i'm sure there's plenty of people listening to this now who don't like me i don't have a problem with that you know i have no control over what other people think i i have no issues with yeah. that i just try to do the best by my patients and uh, for my family bottom line i love that i absolutely love that here's a question Pav. Yeah. um so let's say we've got a graduate who's graduating um, 2023, when would you say would be the ideal time for this person to start their implant journey? The, the honest answer to that is whenever they want, but the earlier let's you say, are... Let's say, that, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I was going to put, put some more context on that. Definitely. Let's say they like surgery, they like surgery, they want to go into surgery, but they've been told that you need to practice for X amount of years before you go into this. So this um, student... Well, this dentist is keen to learn. He's excited by the prospect of being an implant dentist. He's got the confidence. Um, what would you say to this individual? What I'd say to that individual is go for it. Start it straight away. But yeah. the proviso that I would add on to that is start with heavy, heavy, heavy mentoring. Okay. Yeah. And only do the simple cases for a number of years. Because you have got to build up the other so the, the, the other skills and everything like that. So my, my 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 implant route was very different to one of my colleagues. So to start with, for for very many years, I hate I hated surgery. I I avoid so I avoided surgery like the plague. And in fact, a lot of my stuff was restorative, and I used to do a lot of veneers, crowns, full mouth rehabs like that. And whenever you're doing that type of stuff, if you've got perio or, or, or bleeding, it's a bad thing because then you can't bond. So I used to, I used to hate the sight of blood. And I, I, you know, as I said, it's, then my grandfather asked me that. I was like, okay, I, I need to get into it. And I, I found a lot of my fear was actually from not understanding. It was, it was lack of knowledge, lack of experience. And then you build the knowledge in terms of theory, and then you build the experience through exposure. You build the experience faster with a mentor. 
<clears throat> so anybody who like I've spoken to some students where they're just like, I want to be an implant surgeon. I'm like, fine, go for it. Just learn to walk before you can run. That's all that I'm expressing to you. So one of my other colleagues, um, he he started his implant career. We're, so I'm I'm just a few years older than he is, and we started our implant. He started his implant uh, career m- much much earlier in terms of time wise than what I did. And we're at about the same level now. We've just taken different routes. So what's happened is he got the surgical experience sooner, and it's kind of like he got the restorative education afterwards, whereas I was the opposite way around. I got the restorative education first, then I got the and, – and over time it kind of like evened out. But it's like why, why let anybody stop you, right? Now, if, if, if you're first year qualified and you're like, I want to do a full mouth, I'm like, you know what, just – yeah, that, that 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 there's brave and then there's yeah. being, there, there's brave and then there's being silly. Yeah. Okay? If if you're one year if you're one year out or you're or you're in your first year and you start a theoretical course and it's kind of like you've got a good mentor and the mentor's like you know what is that we've, we've we've got a healed site here you've got a mile and a half of bone to work with let's do it together why not. Why, you know, it's, it, a, a lot of people, so what happens is professionally, we may want to push up to here. So when, when you're, when you're, when you're ambitious and you're, and you're driven and then people, I'm not saying it's bad being down here, but people like comfort. And then when they're comfortable, they're just happy kind of like going along. They, they, they don't want it because, because growth is uncomfortable. Studying hard is uncomfortable. Getting negative feedback from a – it's not negative feedback. It's constructive feedback from a mentor. Is it, it, It's uncomfortable, but it's designed to make you grow. And some people don't like that discomfort. So instead of, instead of seeing somebody progress like this, going upwards, upwards in career, and they're saying, wow, I'm really inspired by that, I'm going to take the same steps, it's easier for them to turn around and say, you know what, you shouldn't be doing that yet. So instead of, instead of yeah. them trying to match your enthusiasm, they're, they're, they're trying to bring your enthusiasm down to theirs. That way they feel comfortable and they don't feel bad that that you're progressing in your career as well. You've got to remember it's down to personality types. Everybody has a different personality yeah. type. Yeah. So, you know, some, yeah. people are, some people are very, very brave and other people are extremely cautious. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's, it, it's just a human thing, right? And that's purely what it comes oh, yeah, down to. Yeah. But what I would say is, is if you want to do it, hundred percent, go for it. At least start to learn the theory. And this is why, why yeah. I've, this is one of the reasons because I've had a few uh, like uh, younger colleagues say, I want to start to learn the theory. And this is why I'm doing modular payments um, uh, to, to, to to make it accessible for everybody for, for my course, because I'm a great believer that if somebody wants to start placing implants and want to learn, who am I to, to, to turn around and say to them, No, you're not allowed to do that. It's my responsibility to guide them and turn around and say to them, okay, you know what? If you want to start, fine. Let's make a start. Let's start here. Let's learn this first. Once you've learned that, then we'll implement this. Then we'll move. And it's ta- it's just taking one step at a time, one step at a time. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so the message for the young dentist here is really just to take that first step. Take the first step as soon as you can. Like you said, jumping into full arches and things like that, that's just... Um, that's yeah that's not being smart that's not very entrepreneurial either um however um taking the first step learning the theory i think that's a great place to be me and a couple of friends were actually talking about this and and we thought how great would it have been if we had finished uni and had have at least placed one implant you know like under mentorship and that's that type of thing and i just feel like um in the future that that's perhaps something that will happen but right now, because it's not happened for a lot of people, you should go ahead and make that happen for yourself. Just get that experience, get that one implant done, and then you'll know if it's for you or if it's if it's not for you. I don't think it is for everyone, but I think everyone should have the ability to do a very simple, single um, implant on a patient because that one implant can literally be life changing for that for that one patient um yeah man um, i'm really excited how how is the academy coming along i mean um how yeah, is everyone finding it <laughs> thank you it's it's actually it's actually <laughs> doing what is it's, it's, it's doing well i'm getting positive feedback from the delegates which is nice, it, it nice. Means a lot to me um as i said it's a lot of my mentors were actually trained by prof brandermark and prof brandermark's philosophy was we need to educate as many dentists as what we can 
in the field of implantology and when we educate them we have to give all the information because if we don't we we we, we, we do the profession a disservice we do the science a disservice and most importantly we do the patients a disservice you know but prof brother yeah, really. is saying that you know no, 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 nobody should die with with with, with their with their teeth in the glass uh, on, on on the bedside table and and and, and how true yeah. is that you know it's and the, I, again, this is one. This is one of the philosophies. So uh, you know, I, I've, I've had a few people turn around and say to me, "Pap, you know, wh- wh- why are you putting so much information into the course? Because we're not going to need. We're not going to need to know that. That's that's so advanced. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, it might be, but I don't want you for you to come across that type of patient and then not realize it's ty- that type of patient and accidentally yeah. wander into that type of patient using incorrect techniques. That's what, that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to, I said, it's, I just, I just enjoy teaching. I, I, I always have. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I just love it. And it's just like, okay, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it hundred percent. So just goes down to my philosophy. Yeah. It, and it's, it, it's, it, and it's, it's, it's the same with, with everything I do. I, I, I tend to get a bit obsessive about things. I'm not saying that's <laughs> It's, it's, it's just me really. yeah yeah so Martin, if anybody so, wanted to, to uh ask you for some advice um with regards to uh, uh, uh anything that we've discussed today what what was what, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you so for me um right now it's instagram dr matt official that's my instagram handle you could also find me on LinkedIn, uh, Mateen Ahmed. Um, that's the best way. Send me a message. I'm, I'm always happy to speak with uh, dentists and kind of guide them, given my expect- expertise on um, sort of my journey so far. Um, I, bef- I wanted to, di- I did want to ask you one question, actually, Pav. Yeah. And I feel like this is something, this is something that holds a lot of dentists back yeah. from um, starting their journey. And also, I think it'll be really good for patients as well to get an understanding of this. Most people are worried about failures or an implant failing. I think that's the biggest fear that people generally tend to have. Because if implants were to always work, then I don't think there would be a massive fear of placing implants. Um, I think failures are what hold a lot of dentists back. And that is also maybe something that patients are also mindful of. So if you had any tips for patients, perhaps how to sort of reduce the chance of failure from their side and just say a few words about failures from a dentist perspective as well. And I I won't be mindful of time here. I'm going to give you, um, let's say you had 30 seconds just to mention failures, something on failures to dentists. Is it something that they should be um, worried about? Is it something that's part of the journey anyways? Um, Are failures sort of quite easy to overcome? And from a patient's perspective, if they were to have a failure, um, could, would that, was there anything that they could have done? And is it something that can be fixed quite easily? That That's sort of yeah. uh, something that I think is very important for dentists. Yeah. So, so what I would say to that is um, failures happen, right? And I don't know why implants get a bad rep for failures. You can place you can place a restoration and have the restoration fail. You can play. You can do an yeah. endo and have the endo fail. You can do periodontal treatment and have the periodontal treatment fail. You can uh, uh, attempt a, a, an extraction and have the extraction fail. There's failure in everything that we do, right? There's failure in every aspect of life. You can you can go out to the supermarket and get hit by a bus. That's a failure, you know. Yeah. So what I would say is that failures happen and. Uh, I've, 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 you, you, you've seen Goodfellas, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you know the scene in Goodfellas where where where, where he goes to where, where where he goes to um prison, but he keeps his mouth shut. And when he comes out, it's like, hey, he pops his cherry, because everybody's just like, well, yeah, it's, yeah. it's bound to happen. It's the same, you know. Yeah. You start placing implants, you're going to have failures. <clears throat> I think um it's not always our fault it's not always the patient's fault don't make a bigger deal out of it than what it than what it is quite often it's just one of those things uh don't be afraid of them it's it, how complex it is to deal with just comes down to how complex the original treatment was you know is if it's um uh, if it's a, a single implant and a healed site that's an that's an easier fix than putting in a zygo that's failing 
you know they so it, it comes yeah. it just comes down to those it comes down to those different levels but and again a, a lot of the failures is down to you know poor understanding or miscommunication or, or something like that and I, and I think that you know if you're afraid of it is because you just need more information so what happens is when we're afraid of something is we, we, we it's, it's because we don't have information about it we don't have you know if i if, if i told you you have this failure it's caused because of this this is how you fix it all of a sudden you're not afraid of it you don't want it to happen but you're not afraid of it anymore so that, that's kind of i know it was a long yeah. seconds but that's kind of yeah. like, like my philosophy on it so just educate yourself just as much as what you possibly can and, and what about for patients for any patients who are listening in terms of failures is there anything that they could do to prevent failures just 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 listen to the advice that your dentist gives you so if you did if your dentist says to you don't smoke don't smoke you know i've had uh, i've had patients where i've done work on them and they're like um i smoke five a day i say you've got to stop a week beforehand and you've got to stop for three weeks afterwards yeah fine not a problem and you do the treatment and then um you go outside to get lunch and you pass the patient and they're having a cigarette. It's, it's, you know, they're, they're, we give instructions for a reason because it's to tip the balance in, 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 in into our favor. And a, a, I get it a lot where patients turn around and say, well, what happened? It's like, I don't know. It's like, you know what? There's about 200 factors that are involved in healing and maintenance of implants. And we've got control over maybe 15 of them. You know, so yeah. you know, there's so many factors that we don't even understand fully. And yet, you know, generally implants are still that successful. I think I think it's a case of, you know, the dentist not beating themselves up and the patients not beating themselves up and understanding. It's just one of those things. Just 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 get it sorted. It's fine. It happens. You know, it's it, it, it's yeah. like the way that I liken it is if you if you were to go out and, it, it, for a drive in the car. And you end up with a puncture, you know, you don't turn, you just go, oh, damn, it's a puncture. I've got to get it fixed. You don't know, well, why did this happen? Could it have been avoided? It's just one of those things. And yeah, I, th- I, think, yeah. I think a lot of particularly inexperienced dentists, they beat themselves up about it too much because they always put it onto themselves. And I used to do it. You know, why, why, why is it happening to me? It's not just happening to you. It happens to bloody everybody. It's, 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 yeah. it's the nature of the field, right? And as I said, it's, it's the same with endo. You know, even, even specialists, they do an endo. No, the endo doesn't work. You know, I get yeah, a lot of yeah, referrals so from, I get a lot of referrals from endodontists where the endodontists turn around and say, have I done this? You know, I've, it's, I, I, I was really happy with how the endo went. It's not healing. Tooth's going to have to come out. Can you deal with it? I was like, yeah, fine. That's not a, that's not a problem. So I think yeah, it's, no, I, I think that's it's, great advice. You know, it's, 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 just being, it's just being sensible and understanding that. We do our best. The patients do their best, and above and beyond that, it's it, it's biology that we're dealing with. Yeah, so true, so yeah. true. And I think uh, coming from coming from you, Pav, I think that's uh, great advice. I mean, you know, this is someone who's um, probably experienced failures, and and you know, you're you're kind of okay, fine, it's happened, let's fix it. It's not the end of the world, type of thing. So, the, the, what 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 the data shows is there's a certain percentage of failures, but there are cluster failures. And what that ha- what what that means is there's that, that there's a small group of patients where they skew the data, because what happens is you can you can put ten implants in that one patient and nine of them won't take. So of wow. the of, okay. of the overall failure rate, the cluster yeah. failure, the cluster failures in certain patients skews the data. Ah, uh, got you. Got which, you, means, got you. Which, means, which means the the other patients have fewer failures, but the ones who get cluster failure, we don't know why it is. It's it's genetics. It's you know, you talk about oxidative stress. You talk about osteoimmunology. You talk about you know, I could go on for days and days and days about this stuff. In fact, I do go on about for it. But days and days <laughs> yeah, it's, um, what, I love what, that. What I'm trying to get across is is, is you know. It's such a beautiful field because it's so nuanced and it's not as yeah. easy as it's not as easy as cut, place, done. You know, there, there's a lot more to it than that. And, you know, that, that's why the studying never stops. Yeah, no, I get it, man. And and, and, and so much respect to you, man, to be able to awesome. share your knowledge with everyone. I mean, that's yeah. that's one of the reasons why I was attracted and I was immediately I was like, OK, Pav, 
I need to learn from you. Like, and, and that's going to happen, you know, that's in the pipeline as well, everyone. So that's um, also something that I'm looking forward to. But yeah, in yeah. terms of what you said before, it might uh, get in hold of me. Instagram is the best way. Dr. Matt Official, any young dentists out there who um, want more out of their career, a sort of fast track, that's what I do. And um, I kind of help get you past your initial stage of your career and get you kind of um, achieving more for your brand and giving patients the best. There's a thing that you mentioned about ethics. Ethics for me um, as a professional is at the forefront of everything that I do. Like for me, my patients love me. Um, You know, I get great reviews all the time. Um, And I think it's something that you probably also agree with as well. Do for others as you would for yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? So um, for me, you know, I'd want the best for myself. And for that reason, I would give the best to anyone who I'm working with. If you would do it for your parents or your siblings or your um, spouse, then it's ethical. And yeah. um, you should do that for your patients as well. So, so yeah, that's what we're all about. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Thanks, Matt. So I just want to uh, clarify, because we've been rambling on for the best part of an hour now. It's, I know, man. <laughs> Is, is, I, think, I think what both of us are saying pretty much is that it, it is good to be ambitious. It's good to be hungry um, and have an entrepreneurial mindset. You know, don't wait for other people to give it to you on a plate. If you want it, go out, find the mentors, go out and, and, and speak to the people who are already doing it. And, you know, don't let anybody tell you you're, you're, you're too young. Um, but similarly is if you are younger, don't don't think that you're going to be able to do uh, the things that somebody's more experienced is, is just take the first step. That's all that it is. And when you take that first step and you become comfortable with it, the next step will appear and the next step will appear. But you have to take that first step at some point. I think that's what we're expressing. Exactly that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take the first step. Go out, find the people who you look up to and get in touch with them. Start speaking with them and um, start learning from them. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Matt. So, uh, I've <laughs> so it's it's coming up to ten o'clock. I've actually got a call with one of my mental one-to-one mentees now because he's got oh, a really nice. buddy together. So it's uh, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 really happy because he's he, he's he's doing great as well. So um, it's it's just fantastic to see other people around you grow, <laughs> and it's uh, so it's. It gives me energy. That's why, you know, this late at night time and, you know, we're up and running and, you know, that, then I'm up at like 4.30 in the morning doing stuff for the for, for, for the academy. And I just, I, I just feel hyped on energy at the moment, even even though it's, you know, sleep. It's like, what's, what's sleep? You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. I'm enjoying it because I, I, I like You're I'm an inspiration. It. Thank you. You're man. an inspiration, man. Definitely, definitely. So to all of those listening, thank you very much. I will be putting up more podcasts uh, 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 more frequently. Please let me know what topics you want me to cover. Um, there's so much more that we can go into. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, one of the reasons why I haven't managed to uh, uh, do the podcast as frequently as what I like is I've got so many guests lined up, but they're busy, I'm busy, and trying to coordinate the diaries is turning out to be a bit of a nightmare. So I think what I'm going to do is just keep recording regardless anyway. And uh, uh, as and when we can get these uh, uh, other guests on, then, then, then we'll do so, as opposed to just specifically waiting for them. So thank you very much for listening. Please uh, uh, ask people to uh, ask your friends, colleagues, family. I don't care if they're dentists or not dentists. Get them to listen to the podcast. Give us a, give us a like. That, that, that always helps. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye.